Hi, I'm Kate. I work in the membership team and in this video we're going to take a closer look at micromoths. And the first question I should probably answer is what is a micromoth? It's a term that some of you might not have heard before but all moths and butterflies are insects in the order Lepidoptera. We then split these into two groups, the butterflies and the moths, but the moths can be further separated into two sections, the macro or larger moths and the micromoths. Generally speaking, the micromoths are the smaller species, as you might expect, but a lot of those families are also the ones that are considered to be the most primitive, so those that evolved earliest. But generally speaking, a micromoth is a moth with a wingspan of two centimetres or less. Of course, there are some exceptions to this. If you've ever used a moth trap, a light trap, to attract moths to your garden or to your local park, or maybe you've attended an event with someone using a light trap, you might have come across a few micro moths, and you may have thought that they were too small and too dull and too difficult to bother trying to identify. And while it's true, some of them are very tiny, with wingspans of just two to three millimetres long, and some of them are quite difficult to separate, that's not the case for all of them. We have around 59 butterflies that are regularly recorded in the UK, but we have over 2,500 moths. And of those, over 1,600 are classified as micros. It's quite a large group, they're very diverse, and some of them are very beautiful and very distinctive and actually quite easy to identify. So with this video, I'm hoping to introduce you to some of those species that you may see in and around your house and your garden, and hopefully encourage you to have another look. The first two micromoths I want to mention are known as the white-shouldered house moth and the brown house moth. Perhaps not the most colourful and exciting looking moths you've ever seen, but these two species are ones that you might actually already be quite familiar with. Most people know that we have house spiders in the UK, but perhaps not so aware that we also have two species of micromoth that like to share our homes. There's a good chance you've spotted one or both of these species resting on the walls or the windowsills of your house. Now finding small brown moths inside may cause you to worry that you've fallen prey to the dreaded clothes moth that can have such a devastating impact on your woolly jumper collection. But these two species actually belong to a completely different family. And although the caterpillars of the house moths may have a little bit of a nibble on natural fibre such as cotton or wool, they mostly get by biting dead animal and vegetable matter, including all the dust that gathers behind your radiators. And although they are known as house moths, and that's where we quite often spot them, you will also see them outside, so you might spot them on the walls of your shed or your garage or just flitting around in the garden, and like a lot of moths, they're also attracted to light. This is the coxfoot moth. These moths are very tiny, with wings that are only a few millimetres long, but they're very common throughout the UK and can be seen in quite large numbers through the summer months. If you get the chance to visit a wildflower meadow when the sun is shining, take a moment to peer inside the flowers of the buttercups and the daisies, and you may find these moths inside, sometimes dozens at a time. If you take a closer look, you might spot their silvery markings glinting in the sunshine and see their distinctive characteristic behaviour as they slowly pump their little wings open and closed. The moth is named after the favourite food plant of the caterpillar, which is the coxfoot grass. This large grass is easy to find and is recognisable by its large seed head, which is supposed to resemble a cockerel's foot. Look for the dried stems, which stay standing throughout autumn and winter, and take a look at the very bottom of the stem, and you might find the characteristic round hole which tells you that a coxfoot moth caterpillar has crawled inside to make its pupa, where it can stay over winter until it emerges as an adult in spring. This next species is a favourite of mine. It's called Microteryx aureatella, sometimes referred to as the yellow barred gold. It belongs to a small family of moths which are all brightly coloured shades of gold and purple with little orange fluffy heads. This particular family is one of the oldest that we have in evolutionary terms, and they're unusual in that the adults still have working mouth parts. For most moths and butterflies, the adults feed on either the nectar of flowers, or in a lot of cases they don't feed at all, doing all of their eating in the larval stage. In contrast with this, the microterics have kept their mouth parts as adults and they actually feed on pollen grains. Now their food of choice might give you a bit of a clue to their size, for these moths really are micros in the true sense of the word, and their wings are under 5mm long. Although they may be tiny, as you can see their markings are actually quite distinctive, 
and their habit of flying during the day means they can be quite easy to spot. If you take a closer look at flowers on a really sunny day, you may be lucky to see actually quite large numbers of them all resting on the flowers and feeding on the pollen, like this group here which are seen feeding on hawthorn blossom. If you take a quiet walk through an area with alder or birch trees, you might occasionally notice something small and golden glinting on the leaves. The Argeristia moths are very small but incredibly beautiful, with their wings of gold and bronze and striking white markings. And the two species you're most likely to spot are Argeristia godartella and Argeristia brochila, which are also known as the golden argent and the gold ribbon argent. Sometimes you might be lucky enough to spot one of these resting on the leaves of the mature trees, but they can also be found by very gently shaking the leaves of the trees to disturb them into flying. The caterpillars of these two species feed on the catkins of the trees from the inside. They'll feed inside the catkin and sometimes move on to a second one if they've not managed to get quite fully fed enough, and then they'll remain inside a bud or a catkin over the winter and emerge as an adult in the early summer. So next time you take a walk in the woods, look out for little golden moths flying around in the afternoon sunshine. There is a family of moths known as the Coleophora, whose adults are all very tiny and are either grey or pale brown and very difficult to distinguish from one another. So it might not seem a very great place to start looking at micro moths, especially if you don't have access to the specialist tools required for insect dissection. However, the good news is that the caterpillars of this family are much easier to separate. The scientific name Coleophora means sheath bearing, and these moths are often referred to as the case bearers. The species I want to focus on here is the one most commonly found in Britain, Coleophora serratella, or the common case bearer. The caterpillars of these moths feed on the spring leaves of birch or alder trees. They start off by feeding inside a mine on the surface of the leaves, but once they get too large for this, they create themselves a portable little case. They do this by cutting a section from the edge of a leaf and rolling it into a tube before sealing it closed with silk. The caterpillar can then continue feeding on the leaves from the safety of its little handmade house. Once the caterpillar is fully grown, it can attach this case to the stem of a plant and form its pupa inside. Next time you're passing somewhere with birch trees or alder trees, take a look at the fresh leaves. If you can see some little pale sections on the top of the leaves, turn them over and have a look for the tiny little holes where the caterpillar popped its head out of the case and into the leaf to feed. Or better still, you might find a case there, either an old one that's been abandoned or one that still has its resident feeding inside. In this little bit of video, you can see a Coleophora serratella caterpillar inside its case as it moves from leaf to leaf to feed. There are lots of different species from this family to be found in the UK, and each of them can be identified by the case the caterpillar makes on its food plant. The shape and colour of the case, along with the plant species it's found on, can tell you exactly which species of moth it belongs to. So looking for moths in this family can actually also help you improve your botany skills. This unusual looking insect is the twenty plume moth, and is the only member of this family of moths to be found in the UK. Each of its wings is split into several feathery plumes, which gives it its distinctive fan-like appearance. And the more eagle-eyed among you might notice that each fore and hind wing is split into six, which means it's actually made up of 24 plumes, not 20, as the common name suggests. This little moth can be found all year round, and the adults fly from dusk onwards, but can often be disturbed from vegetation during the day as well. They are attracted to light, and as well as turning up in moth traps, they will often appear on the outside of your windows if you've got the lights turned on inside. The caterpillars are found on honeysuckle plants, and they feed on the flowers and the flower buds, as well as by making little mines in the honeysuckle leaves. They're found in most habitats, wherever the food plant will grow, so why not plant a honeysuckle in your garden and keep an eye out? Here we have the bee moth, whose name comes from the fact that the caterpillars of this moth live inside bees' nests. The female will seek out the nest of a bee, especially bumblebees or certain species of wasp, and lay her eggs inside the nest. Once the caterpillars emerge, they feed on waste and debris lying around, but also on the bee eggs and the larvae as well. 
In bee moths, the males and females are different enough that we can tell them apart just by looking at their markings. The females are slightly larger, with darker wings which are often tinged with a little bit of green, whereas the slightly smaller males are more brightly coloured and more patterned, and they also lack the distinctive dark spot which are seen on the wings of the female. The adults fly from around May to September, though they're much more common in the summer months, and they are nocturnal, so they fly at night, but can also be seen resting on vegetation in quiet spots of the garden. This pretty moth is the small magpie, which you might spot flitting around the shrubs and hedges in your garden or local park, as they're quite easily disturbed from vegetation when they're resting during the day. Sometimes they might be mistaken for their macro cousin, the magpie moth, which is a bit larger and more brightly coloured. The adults of the small magpie fly from spring right through to autumn, and they're also attracted to light, so they will turn up in the light traps that are used to record moths. The main food plants for the caterpillars of the small magpie is the glorious stinging nettle. So if you have a corner of your garden where you maybe have a few more wildflowers or somewhere that you can let get a little bit wilder, this beautiful little moth is just one of the many insects that will benefit from your nettle patch. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've found it interesting. We've just touched briefly on a handful of the species of micromoths that are around us in the UK. There are literally hundreds more species for you to get out there and discover and enjoy. So next time you're out and you see something flying around in the grass or the hedgerow of your garden or perhaps fluttering around your security lights, why don't you have a wee look and see what you've got. And if you do have a collecting pot like one of these little bug pots or possibly a hand lens, it does help when you're looking at such small insects. But I hope you'll agree that they are definitely worth a closer look.